This video is going to be about the law of total probability. It sounds pretty technical, but I think with a picture, it's much easier to understand the definition. So we'll lead with the picture and we'll use that to guide us to a definition. And then we'll conclude with two examples. Both of the examples come from this second textbook in our syllabus, specifically chapter one, probability spaces, and then section four, conditional probability. And if you just do a search for um, total probability, there is the following theorem as known as the law of total probability. There it is. We're going to justify that with a pretty picture, much like this, but with less color. So let's get going. Okay, first, a picture. So we're to imagine we have a sample space, which I always draw as a box, but doesn't have to be rectangular. And the sample space is broken up into these non-overlapping sets, which I'm just going to denote. Let's write it down here. A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. A necessity of this definition is that these A's, these sets AI's, uh, do not overlap. They are disjoint. And then, theoretically, we have this other set, B. And the law of total probability tells us how to find the probability of B. Now, the probability of B consists of many different intersections. It's the intersections of B with A1, this space, B with A2, B intersect A2, B intersect A3, B intersect A4, and B intersect A5. Because the AIs are disjoint, we can just add up all of these intersections of B with each AI. So here we have the probability of B intersect A1 plus B intersect A2 plus, I really shouldn't have done five, but that's okay. I'll just shortcut it and say dot, 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 all the way out to B intersect A5. Now, based on conditional probability, we can rewrite these intersections as the probability of A1 times the probability of B given A1 plus all the way out to, I'm just rewriting all of these intersections as conditional probabilities, essentially. And that is our definition of total probability, right there. You can write the probability of B as the sum of conditional probabilities times the probabilities of these sets themselves. I think it's actually easiest to see it in terms of intersections, but the definition actually stands in terms of the conditional probabilities. Okay, so here's our first example. Suppose in a certain population, there is exactly 50% males and exactly 50% males. That's not a very realistic scenario, but it helps make our problems easier. So I'm just going to go with it, even though I don't quite like it myself. We will suppose there are 50% males and 50% females, and the males make up 10% of the colorblind individuals in this population. The females make up 1% of the colorblind individuals in this population. So if we are interested in the probability that we obtain by random selection a colorblind individual from this population, we're essentially looking at the probability that you are male times the probability that you're colorblind, given you're male, 
plus the probability that you are female times the probability that you are colorblind given that you're female. And I knew to write it out this way because when you interpret colorblind here, you're saying, what's the probability you're colorblind given that you're a male individual? Or alternatively, what's the probability you're colorblind given that you're a female individual in this population? So this turns out not to be so bad. 0.5 times 0.1 plus 0.5 times 0.01 because R is the most powerful calculator we have. We will jump right into R to do all these calculations for us, 0 0.055. So this is equal to 0 0.055 or 5.5%. So if we were to go into this population, this totally fictional population, and randomly select an individual, there is a 5.5% chance that we will identify from that random selection of one individual a colorblind person. Okay, this wasn't so bad. I think this starts to show the generality of the law of total probability. But just to expand our thinking, uh, the next example is about a completely different world. Now here we are imagining that a factory has three assembly lines that produce computer memory. So if we don't really know anything about assembly lines or computer memory, you can just imagine there is one factory with three individuals and the individuals are producing parts for a computer. So line ones, two, and three make up 50, 30, and 20% of the total production from the plant, from the factory. Now, not all computer parts, memory especially, come out of the factory fully functional. Some proportion of the produced uh, memory chips are defective. So we will uh, just claim that 4% of the defective parts came from line one. Or trying to phrase these more closely to how we will write these symbols, we would say the probability that it's defective given that it came from line two is 5%. The probability that a specific chip is defective given that it came from line three is 1%. So if we're interested in the probability that we get a defective part from this factory, we don't really care what line it came from. We just want to know whether or not the chip we have is defective. This is a capital D for defective. So in this case, it's not bad. We could say line one contains 50% of the produced chips and 4% of those chips uh, are defective given that they came from line one. So I'll just fill in the rest of these then using the same logic. it's almost a pattern. We're essentially looking at the intersection between chips, computer memory that came out of line two, and are defective. But the way we're creating this intersection is through conditional probability, saying 30% of chips came from assembly line two, and 5% of those chips from assembly line two are defective. So if we just carry out all of the type of multiplications, we get something like this. If 
again, I will just turn to R to do this. Let's see if I can memorize it. No, I'll just do both on the same line. There we go. 0 0.5 times 0 0.04 plus 0 0.3 times 0.05 plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.01. That is 0 0.037. 3.7% of the chips from this specific factory are defective. We don't care which assembly line it came from. We just want to know that something around 4% of the computer memory produced from this factory is defective. I don't know if that's particularly good or bad for an industry standard, but my point here is to show you the generality of the law of total probability. It works for all sorts of problems and is an incredibly practical tool in the world of statistics.